Happy 35th anniversary season, Discover Wisconsin. I am proud to say that I was one of the early hosts of this series. To think I started my career at seven years old. Just kidding. Along with myself, many hosts have had the opportunity to bring and share with you stories of their great state. Stay tuned and see what this group of hosts has in store for you. Spending the past year with the Discover Wisconsin crew, I have traveled different routes all across the state that have connected me to towns, businesses, events, historical landmarks, and so many incredible people. This year, I have the amazing opportunity to explore one county that bridges the gap between multiple major cities, Jefferson County. Hello and welcome to Discover Wisconsin. Centrally located between Madison and Milwaukee, Jefferson County houses a network of roads, trails, and waterways that foster recreation, business, and connection. I definitely found the right travel buddy, Kevin Weissman, Parks Director of Jefferson County and Nature Enthusiast. I met up with Kevin to learn just how interconnected this county is and plan out the best routes to explore this year. Hey Andrea, how are hey, you doing? Hey, you must be Kevin. I am Kevin. You ready to uh, maybe go for a little hike here? This is one of my favorite parks. Yeah, I'm... Ready to explore Jefferson County. This is gonna be an epic adventure we're about to take. And you are the Parks Director. Yep, I'm the Jefferson County Parks Director. In the county, there's about 60 miles of bike trails, and we've got the Glacier Drummond State Trail, the Glacier River Bike Trail, and the Interurban Bike Trail. Um, we have 224 miles of snowmobile trails that transect the entire county and also connect all of our communities. The water trails are another big one. We have 120 miles of rivers and streams in Jefferson County and 60 some put in takeout sites that give you access to those all the way down. Part of our trip is gonna to be to go out and travel a bunch of these paths and trails and we're gonna take you down to Jones Dairy Farm and you're gonna see kind of a business that's created a, a front facing um, space that you know directly serves that access to the bike trail. And I am so excited to start this adventure next winter. In the meantime, can you show me some of these routes? You bet, let's take a look at the our water trails map and where we're going to go on the river. Oh yeah, here there's a Goat Island. Is that something we're going to do? We are absolutely going to go to Goat Island in Jefferson. After chatting with Kevin, I was ready to jump into these maps and ride the routes of Jefferson County. Today, Kevin and I will brave the cold and ride the first of our four routes by snowmobile. We grabbed two experts and headed over to Route 19 for some breakfast. The neatest part about our county is we have so much diversity from the Kettle Moraine with the rolling hills and the deep forest uh, all the way up to the water. We have two, two rivers when they're froze, they're one of the neatest rides. The route we're taking today? Here we are at Route 19 Cafe. From here, we'll head down to Lake Mills for the Knickerbocker Ice Festival and we'll end our day at Dog and Trub Distillery. Let's go. At Lake Mills, Kevin and I left Jason and Larry to the trails and snuck off to the Knickerbocker Ice Festival for some chilly fun. Well, I'm ready to drink. <laughs> what do you recommend here? I would obviously recommend the Ice Hens this morning, the Tyranina Brewing. Cheers. <laughs> I'm excited to check out this Ice Hedge. And you're the inventor of the Ice Hedge. Well, I, 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 maybe I kind of had something to do with that. <laughs> Rock Lake used to be uh, a big source of ice back in the late 1800s and early 1900s. Um, they'd haul it out of the lake and they'd take it down to the south end of the lake to the what was called the Knickerbocker Ice Company. And then it would go to Madison and Milwaukee as, uh, you know, as a refrigeration source. But we, you know, thought, hey, let's go out there and see if we can cut some ice and, you know, simulate that a little bit. Cheers to the Ice Hen. Yeah, cheers, cheers. <laughs> the Ice Hen inspired us to do a little ice carving ourselves. We also played some bags, competed in an ice cream eating contest, raced the I did or dad, where Lucky Kevin pulled me on a sled, built a mini ice hinge, hula hooped for a minute, and ate a banana. And just when you think things couldn't get more interesting, they announced a fish toss. Here we met Raina, the executive director of Legendary Lake Mills. What's your favorite activity? Besides the fish toss, I really enjoy crowning the Knickerbocker Ice King. Thank you all for coming to the Royal Coronation. 
After celebrating legendary Lake Mills royalty, we return to Rock Lake for some ice golf and softball. Needless to say, we killed it. So we figured we better celebrate with none other than an old fashioned. That was a really exciting day. We did a lot. It's the middle of winter in Wisconsin to see, see everybody outside this time of year and having that outdoor fun is, is awesome. I absolutely love it and, and appreciate it in the place that I live. Hey, happy 35th anniversary to Discover Wisconsin. So far, my favorite memories are going to the beautiful wineries and breweries and distilleries here in Wisconsin and doing the worm in a dance circle at one of the wineries because it's truly my only move. Can't wait to see what else Discover Wisconsin has in store. Happy anniversary. Welcome back to Discover Wisconsin. Summer is officially here and we're about to hit the trails. First, however, Kevin and I had a golden ticket to Willy Wonka's Flavor Factory Store, more commonly known as Barris Brothers Coffee Roasters in Watertown, Wisconsin. It's gonna be a good day. I noticed some bikers out here. Are we near a trail? Yeah, we've got several bike trails that connect here through the, the city of Watertown for the county. We just finished phase one of the interurban bike trail, which is gonna connect Watertown all the way to Oconomowoc. So here we're doing some biking today, which I'm really excited about. I love biking. Yes. We gotta drink up first though. Yes, <laughs> yes we do. Here's the route we'll be biking today. We're currently at Barris Brothers. Just for reference, this is the new inner urban bike trail Kevin mentioned. Today, however, we'll start at the Red Cover Bridge and make our way up to Jones Dairy Farm in Fort Atkinson. Lastly, we'll walk across the street to Jones Park for some baseball. Come on. Hello. I'm sorry. Good morning. My name is Pete Barris from Barris Brothers Coffee Roasters. I oh, just hi. wanted to drop off a sample of some of our exquisite flavors. I, how are you enjoying the coffee? It is amazing. Amazing. You should pull up a chair. Yes. Yeah, come hang. Well, Pete, I've heard that you're the Willy Wonka of flavored coffee. How many flavors do you have here? So I think we're at about 39 right now we have. And then every three months we have seasonals that we bring four different coffees out. If you want to follow me into the flavor factory. Let's yes. go to the flavor factory. <laughs> I'm gonna hold on to this espresso though. This place is so cool. It smells amazing. The coffee is so incredible. Thank you so much, Pete, for having You're us. You're welcome. Thank you for coming. And we're coffeeaholic, so we'll be back. Okay. Great. <laughs> A few cups of Flavor Factory fuel, and we were primed for our adventure. Quick shout out to Two Rivers and Fort Atkinson for hooking us up with trek bikes for the ride. Rocking our Two Rivers gear, Kevin and I meet up with some Jefferson County locals at the Red Cover Bridge along the Glacial River Trail. Built in 2000 from early 1900s Barnwood, the Red Cover Bridge was designed to look like a train caboose to commemorate the history of the railroad track underlying the bike trail. Immersed in Wisconsin greenery, we ride like the wind, just as Marcy Rowan did, an avid biker who explored these trails before losing her life to cancer. Rowan is remembered by a statue along the path titled Ride Like the Wind. And what a place for exploration. It turns out that historic railroad I mentioned led to what is now known by locals as Jones Dairy Farm. All right, this is our stop. Thank you all for taking us with you. That was a lot of fun. Originally a rail car loading dock to the Chicago Northwestern Railroad, today Kevin and I would experience what is now an ice cream parlor and market. Take me back to the beginning. How did Jones Dairy Farm and Jones Market come to be? The dairy farm came first. Our great, great, great grandfather settled here in Fort Atkinson in the late 1830s. We're now seven generations involved in the business and the building behind us was our first manufacturing plant. This houses the Jones Market. So it's an integral part of who we are and what we do today. But this is where the community and the company intersect. And it happens right along the bike trail. If I stop in here in the morning, I'll visit with people. I'll never get any work done because so many people come to visit. Well, this was so wonderful. Thank you for having us and thank you for the ice cream. You're most welcome, thank you. I would cheers you, but I'll just have to cheers Kevin, I guess. <laughs> We'll definitely be back. And although the screaming for some ice cream subsided, the cheering across the road did not. Kevin and I ran over to Jones Park to join in on Baseball Fest, where we cheered on the Generals baseball team. And it looks like I got to experience the railroad after all. What was once a busy railroad that transported goods for the Chicago Northwestern Rail Company now serves as a scenic bike trail system to connect people to nature, to Jefferson County towns, to the history that founded these routes, and of course, to each other. Coming up, we explore some wildlife while paddling the Rock River. 
And we're back with Discover Wisconsin. Birds are charismatic. It doesn't matter if you're a birder or not. If somebody sees something unusual, people will flock <laughs> to go see it. It brings people together and it gives you a chance to connect with people and introduce them to your hobby. What should we be looking out for? I know there's bald eagles that nest around here. In fact, on Goat Island, I've seen them perched several times. Great blue herons, they're often on the shoreline or they'll be in the trees. What's your favorite bird? For the river, it would be spotted sandpipers. They're just this little sandpiper, and when they're foraging, their tail, I call them bobber butts, because their <laughs> tails are just going constantly. I'm gonna be on the lookout for some bobber butts. <laughs> <laughs> you mentioned that the Rock River connects four different towns in Jefferson County. Why is that connection so important when it comes to the people here? Being able to paddle from community to community on these rivers creates this really neat opportunity to recreate from place to place. We call them water trails because they are trails. They're just like riding your bike. You can paddle from here to there in the same way, and they, they provide really neat recreational opportunities for folks to come in and utilize. And here's the route we'll be paddling today. Here we are at Heron's Landing, right along the river. We'll start a journey just south of here at Riverfront Park. Our first stop will be Goat Island. From there, we'll enjoy some bird watching and paddling until we dock at Two Rivers in Fort Atkinson. Then, we'll hit up the Glacial River Trail again and walk over to Frosty Freeze for some ice cream. Once again, big shout out to Two Rivers Bicycle and Outdoor Shop. These guys sure to come in handy around here. Okay, remember when I mentioned that non-bird animal we'd be encountering today? Well, here's where things get a little different. Hi! Hi. Hello, I'm Heidi! Andrea! Welcome to Goat Island! Thank Welcome you. to Jefferson! Thank you. Hi. Meet my friends! Hello, what are their names? Oh, this is Trixie. <laughs> this is baby no ears. And that's Floppy. Oh, baby no ears. Would wow. you like some snacks to feed them? Yeah, I would love that. They know what they are. <laughs> <laughs> and this definitely reminded me of my childhood growing up on a farm. But I couldn't tell who was more in their element. Me or Kevin? I've never heard of Goat Island, so this is a first for me. That's awesome. What inspired this place? Uh, really, it was an island that was an eyesore to the community. And we were just thinking about it one night, let's put a goat on there. <laughs> And then we're like, well, there, you can't have one goat, mm -hmm. so let's put two goats. And sometimes there's six goats. Yeah. It's fun, it brings joy. I mean, how much laughter has it brought you today? A lot. You know, yeah. they're, they're super funny. I think goats just make us laugh. Goats are really funny. They have these amazing personalities. Is anyone able to just come here whenever they want? Anyone, they, you can camp here. We just ask that you're nice to the animals and take your garbage when you leave. There's a gumball machine up there that you can put quarters in and feed them, so if you come to the island, bring quarters or animal crackers. Come on, Charlie. Okay. Hey, you have to wait your turn. Hey, I'm trying to, got to share. <laughs> he is so naughty. Back on the Rock River, we enjoy a peaceful ride and pick back up where we left off with Jean. After landing at Two Rivers, we had one last stop to make. It turns out the Glacial River Trail, yes, the same one we biked on, was just next door and leads right to Fort Atkinson's local ice cream joint, Frosty Freeze. So, after a little huff and adventure down the Rock River, Frosty Freeze was most definitely the cherry on top, literally, of a perfect summer day in Jefferson County. Hi everyone, I'm Marie Justice. From jumping out of airplanes to back road ATV, it has been a wild ride. Here's the 35 more adventurous years of discovering Wisconsin. Welcome back to Jefferson County on Discover Wisconsin. After a peaceful retreat along the waterways, I was ready for some action. Home to three nationally recognized motorsports dealerships, including Rock River Power Sports, John Hartwig Motorsports, and Rob's Performance Motorsports, Jefferson County is the mecca of power sports. Today, we'll be riding spiders. We'll join the SOAR crew on one of their monthly bike rides. Before I got caught in a web, however, I wanted to find out just what I was getting into. We met up at Rob's Performance Motorsports. Here, we met Rob, the owner, and Steve, a member of SOAR, for a chat. 
SOAR stands for Spider Owners and Riders. What it was originally was just a way to develop community, whether it's our, our, our three-wheel vehicles or two-wheel vehicles. And what SOAR is very, very heavily involved in and raises a lot of money is for the Road Warrior Foundation. These are men and women who have come back from the war and they are injured. We can put them on a spider so they don't have to hold up a two-wheel bike and they get to go for a ride called wind therapy. But the spider has opened up the door for so many different types of people. All right, should so, we hit the road? Yeah, Let's very do good. It. All right. <laughs> and so we joined the SOAR crew to shred some rubber. Here's our route for the day. Rob's Performance Motorsports. From here, we'll spider on over to Astoland State Park for a little history lesson. And finally, we'll zip on over to the Jefferson Speedway for some motorsports action. Ready, set, go. Well, I made it to the first destination, Aztalan State Park, where we met Bob Birmingham, a former Wisconsin state archaeologist, to learn about the grounds of Wisconsin's first town. Nice riding. Good job, good hey, job. I was impressed. Yeah, it was Bob, awesome. hi, I'm Andrea. Welcome to Aztalan State Park. Are you ready to learn a little bit about ancient Aztalan? Are you ready? Yeah. Yeah. Step this way. It's been a long ride. Well, the park is over 100 acres, but the ancient site of Astalan uh, occupies about 18 acres. It was established over 900 years ago by people who came from Southern Illinois, a place that we call Cahokia, America's first city. Uh, the people that came here from Cahokia came by river in canoes up the Mississippi River, turned right and went up the Rock River. A few days later, came to the Crawfish River to this spot we call Astalan. So Astalan was located literally on a roadway, equivalent to federal highway leading to the state highway to a county highway. The roads we ride today may not have been known to the people of ancient Astalan, but the river was an equivalent and important means for travel. Pretty awesome to learn that the route we paddled was the very route that the Mississippians traversed almost 1,000 years ago to set up Wisconsin's first town. I wonder what the people of Aztalan, having traveled mainly by water, would have thought if they saw one of our spiders today. I will say, once I got the hang of these bad boys, I understood why it was such a rush. Riding along an open road amidst a countryside backdrop was ultimate freedom. But it wasn't enough for our adrenaline junkie friends. What better way to amp it up even more than the Speedway, of course. Take it from a novice. If you have any desire to explore your spidey senses, do it. If motorcycling isn't your thing, get out and explore some of the other great routes this county has to offer. Just as the people of Aztalan reminded us, routes have fostered connection for thousands of years. Today, Jefferson County continues to build and maintain important routes. It's these routes that connect us to places, to our past, and to incredible people.